good afternoon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ma khalaqna as-samawata wal-ard wa ma baynahuma illa bil-haq. Wa inna as-sa'ata la-atiya fasfah as-safha al-jamil. We have not created the heavens and earth and everything in between except for a purpose. And the hour is certain, so forgive graciously. These were the words of God in his holy book, the Quran. In this verse, we are reminded that our time is limited. We must therefore try to understand the importance of forgiveness. I am Maisalun Kiyal. I was born and raised in the Galilee in an Arab Muslim family, where my parents taught me to accept and respect and appreciate the differences between people. And as someone who was raised in a mixed community of Muslims, Arabs, Christian Arabs, and Jews, you face a unique reality where you are exposed to hear different voices and opinions and familiarize yourself with a very uneasy task. So all of this together influenced my upbringing and motivated me to become an educator who believes that social change begins from early ages. In the last 18 years, I have worked as a teacher and I saw my teaching as a mission rather than a job. I teach at Al Najah Elementary School in Makar village in the northern Galilee of Israel. I am honored to, sh to share with you my method for teaching forgiveness education through the perspective of Islam and religious traditions. Part of my belief is to prepare students to become good adults and to encourage and promote tolerance and forgiveness amongst my students. I aim to soften conflicts between them and push for better, healthier conflict management between pupils. I conducted a research last year about forgiveness education led by Professor Robert N. Wright. The Agape and Forgiveness Education program took place at the same time last year in elementary schools in Israel, Northern Ireland and Taiwan. 20 schools from Israel participated in this program, 10 of them Arabic-speaking schools and 10 of them Hebrew-speaking schools. Professor Tali Gal led this program along with our dearest Leki Saban, who coordinated the program. We were invited to the International Educational Conference on Agape Love and Forgiveness and took place last July at Madison University in Wisconsin, USA. I was ch chosen and I was chosen to present the methods I have been used while working with my pupils at my class. That curriculum was for 10-year-old students and comprised 14 lessons. During these lessons, the students studied about what forgiveness is and is not, the inherent worth love, the actual process of how to forgive, and positive impacts of forgiveness and service love in wider communities. Robert Enright sees forgiveness as a moral virtue and as a choice. He said that forgiveness is a tool that every child should have. Learning the principles of forgiveness is important to the relationships and psychological well-being of children and adolescents. I strongly agree with him that forgiveness is a bridge in seeing the worth in others and that it can be a path to peace. Forgiveness is the most heroic of all moral virtues. His work is applied to the educational field to promote this virtue among children who tend to be the most receptive. They can in fact receive ideas and put them into practice. He looks at forgiveness from the perspective of data that he collects using the modern scientific method 
to look at what constitutes forgiveness and what forgiveness does to the ones who practice forgiveness. In addition to the educational value of teaching forgiveness, I find that it has an added benefit of cultivating the children's pride in and identification with their religion. Forgiveness is a very central concept in Islam. There are many verses in the Quran and sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. It is important to believe in God's mercy and forgiveness. It is also necessary to base human relations on forgiveness. Forgiving each other is one of the most important of Islamic teaching. Because of all that, I decided to participate in the education for Agape Love and Forgiveness program. And when I read the forgiveness education curriculum guides that have been developed by professional educators, I knew that I was the right person for this mission. <laughs> We, the teaching staff of the 20 schools in Israel that participated in the program, decided to take this journey for the idea that forgiveness education is important in all aspects of life, and that we all can live better as we understand, appreciate, and practice the moral virtue of agape, love, and forgiveness. Here are some examples of what I did. Before we started the journey towards forgiveness and love, the children were given well-designed notebooks to write in their journals. I prepared the notebook cover with a special design that has quotes about forgiveness in the three languages, Arabic, Hebrew, and English. I built a website for all the lessons in the site. I included the lesson plans, videos, pictures, and important notes. The general procedure for each lesson was, first, I introduced the main idea, then a story or a movie is presented. After that, the students are invited to express their thoughts and ideas in a class discussion. After the discussion, students participate in different kinds of activities, and finally, they journal their reflection. Let's now take a look at how the different lessons demonstrate how the Quran and the Hadith teaches us the importance of forgiveness. In lesson one and two, we focused on storytelling for learning forgiveness. Before we started the journey, I talked about the concept of forgiveness in the Quran and in the Hadith. The Islam teaches the importance of forgiveness, and we are repeatedly reminded that God is the most merciful and forgiving. Forgiveness is a critical aspect of Islam. Muslims believe that God is the most merciful and forgiving. There are many names of God given in the Quran and they indicate many qualities. Some of these names is related to his mercy and forgiveness, like Al-Ghafur, which means the most forgiving and it appears in the Quran more than 70 times. The students were asked to read a story rising above the storm clouds written by Robert Enright. Forgiveness education introduces children through stories to the idea of forgiveness with no pressure to forgive. We, as educators, introduce them to the story characters who have had difficulties and pains. It helps my students, as they see the story characters, understand that kindness, respect, what kindness, respect, and love are when treated unjustly. It reduces and eliminates unhealthy anger and helps students and teachers repair relationships. 
In the second phase after reading the story, the kids were asked to write about what forgiveness is about. I prepared a poster with all the sentences that my students wrote in Arabic, and I translated them into English, as you can see in the poster. Uh, and these are some of their answers. I need to note that I gave them this um, uh, exercise um, before the lunch break. <laughs> So Hawash said, forgiveness is like a delicious sandwich filled with vegetables as, and it smells like delicious meat. <laughs> Khalid said that forgiveness is like hamburger. It smells so good. The closer I get to it, the more comfortable I feel. And when I take a bite of it, I feel so happy. <laughs> Muhannad, it seems Muhannad ate before the lesson. So, so he was more serious. <laughs> so forgiveness is like a kind tr green tree. It gives us all that it has for free. Um, lesson three introduced the idea of inherent word to students within the context of giving, seeking, and receiving forgiveness. A person has a value because he or she is a person. And here I mentioned the iconic line from Dr. Seuss Horton, here's a who book, that teaches about empathy and kindness. A person is a person, no matter how small, which means that our worth or value doesn't depend on outside differences. Our worth value is on the fact that we are members of a human family and that we are able to love and do good. Lesson four introduces the moral virtue of service, love, agape, seeking and receiving forgiveness. Service love begins to develop in us as we are able to see the inherent worth of ourselves and others. It further develops in us as we offer something good to others. And here was a perfect time to mention the hadith which Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, to smile in the face of your brother or sister is an act of charity. Lesson six helps students understand that they should seek justice as they practice forgiveness and service love. In this lesson, students learn about the importance of practicing service love in balance, which means that each person must learn to offer these virtues to both the self and the other. And at this point uh, of the lesson, I quoted the verse of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa in ta'fu wa tasfihu wa taghfiru fa inna allaha ghafoorun rahim. If you pardon and overlook and forgive, then Allah is forgiving and the most merciful. In this verse, we are given the greatest motivation to push ourselves to forgive. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, be merciful to others and you will receive mercy. Forgive others and Allah will forgive you. If we forgive others, then God will forgive us. So try to be kind and forgiving so that we can get kindness, love and forgiveness from God. Um, in this lesson, for, it, it talks about forgiveness, that it always begins with an unfair or unjust act. At the root of injustice is the failure to see that people have a great worth to offer service love. If we recognize that the one who caused the pain has equal worth, then we are more likely to know when an injustice has occurred. Then we can forgive and seek justice. This sentence is a very powerful one. It touched me personally, and I started to see things differently. When thinking about the equal worth that the person has, if we change the way we look at things, then things you look at change. When we have been unfairly hurt, we can continue to see our own deep worth and the deep worth of all the people. These were the main points of lesson eight. But before we started the lesson, I mentioned this verse. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن عفا وأصلح فأجره على الله إنه لا يحب الظالمين. If a person forgives and makes reconciliation, his rewards is due from Allah. Whoever forgives others from the heart, then God will give him reward 
And we know God's rewards are best from all. Um, in this lesson, we started to go through the process of forgiveness that is based on Enright's process model of forgiveness, which includes changes of cognitions, emotions, and behaviors. The students were asked all the time to think about their personal unjust situation. I kept repeating and clarifying that they don't forgive the hurt itself, but they forgive the person responsible for the hurt. Um, the pupils watched the beginning of the movie, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which is a very powerful story about forgiveness. We had a discussion about the word anger and how we can deal with anger after being unfairly treated. Learning breathing techniques is one way to reduce anger and anxiety. This is how we started the lesson. The students were asked to take slow, deep breaths from their nose and exhaling out of their mouth for several moments. Lesson nine, the focus of this lesson was on feelings caused by injustice act. The students began, began to uncover their anger toward a, a person who caused them an unfair hurt. This phase, known as uncovering anger, is the first phase of the four phases in the, in the forgiveness process. We learned that people normally experience a variety of feelings, happiness, excitement, sadness, and anger. I explained to them that it is possible for forgiveness to help reduce these negative emotions. Anger is a feeling that can hurt our happiness, health, and personal relationships if it begins to live in our heart. How might a person heal from uh, feelings of sadness and anger? Forgive. I kept repeating and reminding them that when we forgive, we don't forgive the hurt, but rather a person caused the hurt, that caused the hurt. Before we started the movie, it was a perfect time to mention the hadith by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that gives us examples how to control anger and how to channel it into acceptable actions. A man said to Prophet, give me advice. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, do not get angry. The man asked repeatedly, and the Prophet answered each time, do not get angry. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, knew that if a person controlled his anger, he would be able to control everything else in life. I kept reminding them that if any of them is feeling angry without injustice, they should remember that there is a great hope for each of them. Forgiveness can help them feel less sad and angry. In lesson 10, the students learned about two phases, decoding to forgive and doing the work of forgiveness, which means seeing with the eyes of my heart. I explained it by telling them that we begin to do the work of forgiveness by beginning to change the mind or to see with a new eye. We do this by trying to understand the person who offend us. We begin to see that the per person with the eye of our heart. This is in fact called service love, agape. We do this without pretending, excusing, denying, or forgetting the injustice. As we begin to change our thinking about that person, we may begin to see the person differently with the eye of understanding, with the eye of our hearts. The last activity was journey to forgiveness and love. The students were asked to write in their journals about the feeling that come out from their heart if they try to focus or not to focus on themselves, but turn to the other person it is, in fact, switching the focus from the self to the other person. They were asked to draw a picture that represents their feelings and decide whether it is winter, spring, summer, or fall in their heart. I kept reminding them that we must keep in mind that as much as we need God's forgiveness for our own mistakes, we must also practice forgiveness toward those who offended us. Islam teaches human beings to be forgiving. Our Prophet Muhammad said, whoever suffers an injury and forgives, 
God will raise his status to a higher degree and remove one of his sins. I am proud to say that I fulfilled all the objectives of the lesson. Looking at my pupils, you can see how much, how each one of them is deeply concentrating in their task. And what really moved me is that a profounding transformative process that two of my students have gone through. One of my pupils went from an impulsive kid with emotional challenge to a more accepting and more forgiving one. And according to their report, their experience had a powerful effect on them. We can play this. رد على مساعد قياس من صف ل 5000 العمر 12 في المدرسه النجاح الابتدائي اسمي جنى عمري 11 صف خامس بدرس بمدرسه النجاح الابتدائي قبل البرنامج ما يبلش ما كنتش ولا اعمل شيء وكانت كنت كل ما حدا يحكي معي يعني اصيح وما كان شيء يهمني شيء ما انا ما كنتش اعرف كيف اتعرف على الناس او شيء وكنت دايما اتعصب كنت كثير عصبية البرنامج هو جدا ممتع وكثير حلو وبيعلمك اشياء كثير كثير يعني قبل مثلا ما اذا انت ما كنتش تحب مثلا انه تخاف تسامح حدا او شيء بيخليك تسامح وبيخليكش تغضب ما كنتش اعرف انه اسامح ولا يعني ولو كانت قصة صغيرة ما كنتش اعرف اسامح تعلمت كيف يصير عندي صداقة أكثر وصحاب يعني لأنه مو شخص ممكن كمان يكون غلطان كل كل الأشخاص بغلطوا صرت أطلع بإيجابية إنه قبل ما أعرف إيش اللي هو السلبي إنه بحب أعرف إيش هو إيجابيات الشيء This experience didn't just stop with one kid, it continued with their other classmates and with me personally. Further to the success of this program, we want to expand it so we can have the same positive impact across the entire Israeli school system. We want this program to have a positive impact on our students. We want teachers to bring the world of forgiveness and love to their students in order to help children learn how to overcome injustice and cultivate the virtue of love and forgiveness. I would like to see my students change their hearts and minds with regards to forgiveness. And I hope that maybe when they grow up, they will come up with, some, with something that will change the world. I hope by this talk I have been uh, illustrated to you the work that I've been doing and uh, that my work is another step towards a better and healthier society. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to have some questions, so if you have... Children are children, suppose. If you, they are in the school, maybe they will listen to you, the teacher and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the parents and the community role? First, because we also introduced in our Afghan refugees came the same thing. And there we introduced child to child and child to adult program. That the message should go to the family. They should discuss it there. Because they are, they are children, so they are the support. And we in our culture suppose elders have and parents have a lot of influence on children. So how their role is. And then why the, how the, the child in their prior groups, how they disseminate this information? Thank you. Thank you. It, is it on? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it is a very good and important uh, question. Um, uh, the parents, first of all, um, we, we, ask the per we ask the parents permission first that they uh, prove that the children uh, participate in this program, this research. And uh, some of the parents were involved in the research. They uh, helped me, they came and helped me. But, you know, I can't, um, we, we are doing our best as teachers. Uh, we, we can't change the world. <laughs> 
I know that the parents and family have an important role to, uh, and they can um, do many things with their children, but, uh, but uh, they, they weren't um, the parents. Uh, we, we talked about the program, but they weren't involved. Some of them was interesting and they came and uh, were interesting and they came and uh, participated, but not all of them. So they, um, we, we did our best to, to change um, the, the, the things for better, but um, it, it can't be changed, you know, easily. More questions? Yes, please. Uh, the mic. Oh, yes, thank you. There's an expression in Arabic. I can't say it's in Arabic. <laughs> but it says that you need power to forgive. You, you must forgive. You can forgive if you have power. So I wonder if you talk, teach in anything about how you can... Um, Displace power. You don't need to have power to forgive, but but forgiving does empower you because it seems for a lot of people in Nazareth, where I am, Nazareth Hospital, uh, and the cycles of violence we've got there, it seems uh, people feel that to forgive is weakness. It's it's weakness. It's not it's not strength. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. It, 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 um, it, sometimes people look at forgiveness as weakness, and uh, we as educators need to change this uh, point of view. So um, it is not an easy task. Sometimes it, I, I, I can't say that all the children changed and all the children um, are better now, but you know, it, it is a start. Let's start, let's begin, let's show them how we can forgive. I, as, a, as an educator, I, as a, their teacher, I can influence them somehow. So uh, I, I need to be in that situation first. Because if, if I am not, if I don't have this power, they wouldn't learn from me. They wouldn't believe me even. So um, it is not easy, but I'm, I, uh, I, I will do it again and again and again so they can... Uh, Maybe I, I can change some of them, or all of them, who knows? <laughs> we, okay, there one question and that's it, okay? Last one. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask something about um, how do you deal with children that don't believe in God? Because it seems in the program that forg forgiveness is just related to believing in God, but if they don't believe in it, so there is, what, the solution? Um, to be honest, um, I didn't deal with the, such children. <laughs> um, I, the program is a program, but I added, you know, I, I, I know that it, when, when I talk about religion traditions, it, it seems different in, in the class, the, the atmosphere, the whole atmosphere changes. They like to listen. They uh, feel uh, safe, they feel, um, um, because maybe the, the, the class that I teach or the, the, um, the community that I am in um, are, are all be, be, believe in God. I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't encounter uh, one, but it is a good question. Maybe I need to think about it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you.